take pleasure to introduce to you Monica Hayslip, the executive director of the Little Black Pearl in Chicago, Illinois. Monica, if you would please come up. We are delighted to have you. I can't believe we've actually got you here. We're proud of you. excited to be here this morning because anytime we come together to talk about art and the impact of art, I think it's a good day. So uh, this morning I kind of want to start out by giving you some context uh, for the work that I'm doing in Chicago. I started out, it, it began as a labor of love for me, um, and I grew up in a community in Alabama that really looks very similar to South Boston. As we were driving from the hotel, or from here yesterday to the hotel, we drove through the neighborhood. And it really made me understand um, that all things are possible. And so hopefully today, as a result of some of the work you see that we're doing around the country in transforming community through the arts, uh, we will hopefully inspire many of you to uh, work with kids in this effort to really have the arts play a very important role in the development of the communities here in Virginia. So if we can uh, roll the tape here, you'll get a sense a little bit of what we're doing in Chicago. Art means everything to me. I really embrace art as an avenue for me to express myself and professionally. It's the thing that I live, eat, and breathe every day. Monica Haslip is the founder and executive director of Chicago's Little Black Pearl Workshop, a community-based organization that provides art and business training to children in the city. Hi, guys. So, Mr. Jabari, sit down and talk to me. The kids love her. Tell me what you guys are working on. I mean, everybody loves Monica. <laughs> I always laugh and say, you know, I have everybody's children, so I don't really have time to have my own. <laughs> are you going to go to college, and have you thought about where you want to go? As a child, I think in every family you have challenges, and during my childhood, painting was refuge for me. So you're out of school for the summer. If she didn't get paid anything, I think she'd still do this because she see the impact it has on the kids. How much do you think this is, you should sell these for? Fifteen. Texas? All this work you're doing? Little Black Pearl is really my thoughts about children. When I started this organization, it was around the idea of images of positive black artists. And I originally called it Black Pearl Gallery. And everybody would call and get completely confused because they thought it was a gallery. And then I started to really think a little deep, deep about the meaning of the work itself. And I realized that we were really servicing little people. And from there, we did workshops. And so that became the name of the organization, Little Black Pearl Workshop. And Black Pearls, to me, are defined as being exquisite and unique and rare. And that's really what I think about the children that we service. Monica grew up in Alabama and attended a high school for the arts. When I graduated, I really didn't have value for it because I never saw anybody that looked like me doing it successfully. So she left her passion behind and entered the real world. Monica spent nine successful and stressful years in marketing but something was missing. When I was in marketing, I missed the ability to just create something from nothing. Typically, I worked uh, to promote a product that already existed. And um, this creative process allows me to have things come from deep within, you know, and that's a totally different experience. The day came when Monica's dreams overpowered her fears. I just stepped out on faith and left my job and bought this building and started Little Black Pearl Workshop. This building actually was built in the 1800s. My first encounter with the interior of this building was really frightening. Monica wasn't the only one frightened. My family and friends really thought I had lost my mind. 
Most of our family is in academic, and for her to switch to art, we couldn't visualize it. They were very concerned about me because the choice didn't seem to be a very sound decision. I was walking away from a profession that had some possibilities for me. So we won't go back in there because I don't know if we'll come back out. My family was concerned about me living in a community that was really um, developing and having some challenges with crime and um, drugs and a variety of different things. This is where uh, we will have Black Pearl Gallery. It's, Teaching an art uh, class only once a week, Monica devoted all her time and resources to the Black Pearl Project. But her dream was expensive. The entire interior of the building had to be reconstructed. In the midst of trying to renovate, I lost pretty much everything. I didn't, I ran out of money. I borrowed money from everybody that I knew to the point where I didn't have food, where I had to rely on support. And I think that when you get to that point, you really are driven by um, your dreams and what you know is possible. Monica's hard work finally paid off and her dream started to come to life. She's actually a hero to me because First of all, I didn't know she owned this place. I thought she was just, you know, um, helping out people that, you know, come in and work and do their own art. But I actually didn't know that she can do this herself. There are no guarantees. When there are no guarantees, that's radical. When you move in those neighborhoods without really knowing what's going on around you, that's radical. When you start to move from a world of working in marketing and glamour and all of that and start doing community work, that's radical. You know, I think living your dreams is radical. And, you know, I'm living my dreams every day, so I'm excited about that. Here we go. Tell me some of the projects you all are working on. Nine years ago, Monica Haslip traded in her corporate marketing gig for a career that combined her formal arts training with a strong desire to work with children. She bought an abandoned building on Chicago's South Side, and after two years of rehabbing and construction, she opened the Little Black Pearl Workshop, dedicated to teaching children about how to combine art and business. This is the most exciting part of the day normally because they're getting prepared to come in and start their work. So at this moment, I'm usually in my office or at a meeting and I'm hearing the chatter and all the conversation downstairs while they're working and preparing their work. They normally come in, they check in with me to let me know they're here so we can order the, how the lunch is ordered and stuff like that. Our next product we're making are jury boxes. Okay, everybody knows the swirl is a very universal symbol. Monica strongly believes in the relationship between creativity and economics. The concept behind the workshop is entrepreneurial. Everyone needs a pencil. Can I get the young artists are taught to use their art form not only as a creative experience, but for profit as well. Critique them and go through them and see which one will be the most marketable, which one you think will sell the most. They do functional artwork, and it ranges from furniture to uh, residential and commercial installations. They come in here, I give them a mock grant of $1,500 from me, made up of mock money, credit cards, and checks. And then they negotiate with, with the organization to buy their supplies, they buy business licenses, insurance, and everything that's required to run a business. If I want to buy this, what procedure do you go through the uh, and I think once you learn those fundamental skills, they really can translate into any, any area or any uh, profession that they choose. Little Black Pearl Workshop is open, so come on, come on, because art is a token. Anything great grows bigger, and so has the Little Black Pearl Workshop. I'm not joking. We are currently at the site of the new home for Little Black Pearl Workshop. And it's housed uh, right here on the corner of 47th Street and Greenwood in Chicago on the south side. We have about 40,000 square feet of new facility that's going on. The mason's going to be here tomorrow to take care of. All these joists are set and all the structural members are set. You know, it's a surreal experience. It's almost like walking through somebody else's brain and thinking about seeing the things that they 
really envision, but really remembering that it's the stuff that you dreamed about. Now again, I'm hearing from kind of the same thing I heard the first time. Have you lost your mind? Are you crazy? Can you really do this? And I, and I really believe wholeheartedly that um, I can do it with the kind of support that I have from my staff and from our supporters um, and the children. You know, they, they demonstrate to me every day that it can happen. Building the new home for Little Black Pearl Workshop came out of necessity. Monica can't turn kids away, and the original site just isn't big enough anymore. I think shortly after I started doing the work, I realized that the need was so huge that I knew that if we stayed focused and if we had the right spirit about the work, that the children would continue to come. Of course, taking on this new challenge means Monica spends most of her time trying to find the money to fund the construction and organization. Finding the money is uh, really a challenge right now because this, this is a very difficult time economically for everybody. We were supposed to do some site visits. and We operate about $800,000 a year. Um, the new site that we're constructing, we will, over the next uh, six months, grow to a staff of 22 and we will grow to an operating budget of about 1.5 million. So it's, it makes sense because we're moving from a space that is about 3,000 square feet to a space that's 40,000 square feet. So it's a huge transition. You know, I have no idea what my calendar looks like. I turn over every rock, I look for every avenue possible. The most rewarding factor for Monica is that she was able to take a small idea and nurture it into reality. That's a real comforting kind of feeling because now I know that regardless of what I do in my life beyond this point, if I decide to paint or if I decide to, you know, move on to something else, it really does have its own life now. If I had to encourage somebody now I would tell them to just believe in yourself and know that you have the capacity to do whatever you think, because if you can think it, it already exists in the world. Just do it. Do one thing towards your goal every day, and then you look up, and it's right there before your eyes. That's my feeling about it. That video was shot about three years ago, or four years ago now, and we've been in the new site for three years. And uh, what's really most exciting about this opportunity today is that uh, this is a time where we can come together and begin to figure out how to uh, utilize some of the things that have happened around the country and replicate them in our communities. I don't believe that there's a big difference between what happens in urban areas and what happens in rural areas. You know, I think we're all being impacted by uh, just the economy. And so Little Black Pearl basically evolved out of this experience where I would, um, you know, uh, Chris talked earlier about artists being a little crazy, and I think I am one of those people, actually. And um, I bought that building sight unseen. You know, I saw the exterior of it, but I didn't see the interior of it. So you probably saw a little bit of the panic in my face. <laughs> because the first day that I walked in that space, I took that camera crew with me. And we actually crawled through the window. And I realized the magnitude of the work that had to be done to bring that place to life. Uh, it took us, you know, two years. But uh, that building had been abandoned for 12 years. And when I moved into that community, I bought that building at an auction for $23,500 and it's 6,000 square feet. So it gives you a sense of what was happening in that neighborhood. There was a neighborhood, uh, I purposely decided that I wanted to find a neighborhood that reminded me of the neighborhood that I grew up in in Alabama. Uh, my neighborhood in Alabama was really special to me uh, because it was a group of working class uh, members of a community that worked very hard to uh, provide opportunities for the children in, those, in that community. 
And so when I started thinking about what do you do now, Monica? What do you do to contribute to life as you have had this opportunity to work in marketing and have some really exciting opportunities? How do you give back? And in my mind, the objective for me was just to teach a class on the weekends in the neighborhood that reminded me of the neighborhood that I grew up in. And the crazy artist in me drove around that neighborhood and started looking at what was happening in it and what was missing in that community. And uh, not only did I decide that I wanted to teach a class, in that moment I decided that I needed to live in that neighborhood. I needed to be present in a way that the children that in the neighborhood, they could see somebody that looked like them that was being successful in an industry that they really looked up to. And uh, at that time, I was at Black Entertainment Television. And uh, some of you may know that Black Entertainment Television has a pretty big influence on our children. And um, I really wanted want to help them understand that there were people just like them that came from communities just like theirs that moved on and began to create new things in life. So when I walked in that space, the first thing that dawned on me was that, you know, I, if you saw the entire video, the thing that I said the most was, man, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And I think a lot of work to do has to do with our entire commitment to our communities. It's not just the spaces that we're in individually. We have a lot of work to do collectively, you know. so. One day, I was sitting, as we moved a little further on in the construction of that space, I was having a pretty rough day. Because as you, as I talked about in the video, I never imagined that uh, I would feel like I was going backwards. Because I had had some sense of success, you know, as I was working with Black Black Team Television. But taking on that project to build Little Black Pearl took everything that I had in me and everything that I didn't have. So it put me in a position where one day I had to convince myself and help me understand, help me understand why I made the commitment to do what I was doing. So I sat down to kind of write what I thought was like a mission statement. And it, it reads, art must become and remain a part of the machinery that moves us to change quickly and creatively. We have always said and continue to say that the battle that we are waging is for the minds of our children. It then becomes very important that art play the role that it should play in empowerment, education, and survival. That became my mantra. That became the thing that continued to help me move forward with this dream of creating this opportunity for children in the south side of Chicago. Since we built this space, and just to give you a sense of the impact of art, I bought that place in 1992. And as I said, I bought it for $23,500. The market rate on the south side of Chicago at that time was about $40,000. Between then and now, the market rate has increased to $375,000. And there's a tremendous amount of development. The empty lot that was next to my house is now filled with market rate housing. Uh, and that, to me, is a direct result of what has happened with artists that have moved into that community. And what typically happens is, artists, uh, we call ourselves starving artists. Most of you know us as starving artists. <laughs> And we look for communities that, that we can move into that we can afford. So we can then continue to do the creative work that we do. And so that allows us an opportunity to uh, move into a neighborhood, uh, not have this expensive cost for living. We usually marry our live and our workspace together, you know, so we can produce our work. But what has happened around the country is, when artists move into communities, things change. New business follows. 
Because artists began to produce the culture, recreate the climate for that community. So many communities around the country, New York City, uh, Tribeca, Soho, Chicago, on the south side, North Kenwood, Oakland, New Orleans, you have many communities where artists moved into these neighborhoods that were in transition, and they began to create the identity. Little Black Pearl's mission today is to really connect art, business, and economic development. So a lot of the work that we do at the organization is, work, is with youth, but it, it's also with our community residents. So I, you know, just to get a sense, as we uh, talked a little bit earlier about uh, having a sense of who is in the room, I, I would be interested to know how many of you believe that art can transform communities. Just the show of hands. Ted, you know, these are your partners. They've already raised their hands. And we got locked in. So, you know, so the, the beautiful part is that your hands are raised, and that is most important because it takes every aspect of our community to make this happen. Without the legislators in Chicago, there is absolutely no way that we could have completed the project that we did. Without community residents, we could not have gotten that project completed. Without the efforts of the children who actually produced the work that brought the attention to the organization, we could not have gotten that project completed. So every, the education community, I mean, we service most of the schools on the south side of Chicago. We, as an organization, decided that we wanted to focus on alternative schools. We wanted to focus on children that didn't have access. And a lot of that has to do with us being able to create opportunities for them to demonstrate what impact art can have on our community. So since we moved into our new site, we moved in in January of 2005. We expanded our programs from four programs to nine programs. And one of them in particular that really speaks to what we're talking about today with community and transformation is a project that we do in our custom order business. Uh, what's really amazing about the work that's happening at Little Black Pearl now is that we are now taking our work outside of the organization into the community. So as a result of that, we're starting to see a huge transformation and a very strategic transformation of that community as a result of art and the impact of art. Four blocks from our site is a commercial corridor. It's called the Cottage Grove Commercial Corridor. And Cottage Grove had been a um, commercial corridor that really had no activity for years. Uh, for those of you that don't know a lot about the South Side community in Chicago, where I'm from, it's the neighborhood where most African Americans moved to in Chicago. It's called Bronzeville. And it's a result of uh, African Americans coming from the South, moving to, the, moving to Chicago for work. And it was the, air, the only area where they could live. Um, and so as a result of that, there was a very vibrant community in that area for some time. And over the years, uh, when the laws were passed where African Americans were able to move to other communities throughout Chicago, many people started to move out of that neighborhood. And over the years, the neighborhood just suffered. They started to, there was a lot of abandoned property, a lot of vacant lots, a lot of crime, drug activity. And so I don't think that's unique to the south side of Chicago. I think many of us are seeing that same experience all around the country. But what has transformed that community is this notion that art can play a role in economic development and community development in a very, very tangible way. So we were hired by the city of Chicago Department of Planning to create the identity for the new commercial corridor. And in creating that new identity, it opened up a whole new world of opportunity. Because now, 
Not only are we creating the identity, we are doing a mural project where all the vacant lots that are in the community, those vacant lots are enclosed by these portable murals that are produced by artists and youth in the community. Uh, so therefore, you're not seeing all of these empty spaces throughout the community that begin to have other retailers that on a national level begin to look at this corridor as a potential viable place for them to move their business to. So now we're starting to see that whole corridor transform. And that is the type of work that happens in communities as a direct result of art. You know, I, I am a firm believer that given the right partnerships that every aspect of this work will require partnerships. It will require a commitment on everybody's part to have the community transform. Uh, and artists are a critical part of that because they are the visionaries, they are the ones who tell the story about what's happening in our communities. And it's a way, you know, when I was young, I always say art is a place to come from and a place to go to. Because those of us that don't feel like we have a voice, art is an avenue to create voice. And the work that we've done with young people, I can assure you, that many of the young people that were on that video, when I started this work, I would say a handful of my children were going to college. And so today, I have children that are at Parsons School of Design in New York, Columbia College, University of Chicago, uh, uh, we, DePaul University. We have students all over the country that are now going to college. And so I believe that programs like this really have the opportunity to be the kind of the staple in communities where we involve youth in this process of transformation. Because the one thing that I've always said to our legislators is that if we don't find ways to engage young people in this process, we will discover that the process won't move forward. And all of the fear and the challenges that we have related to youth will continue. But if we engage them in a way where they see themselves in the community, and art is the absolute best way to do that, then you will find them becoming the ambassadors for the work that we're doing in transformation with communities and utilizing the arts. So today, I really want to just encourage you to uh, make a personal commitment. You know, Little Black Pearl for me was simply a personal commitment to empower the lives of young people by doing what I could do. You know, and everything that is of substance and everything that is significant starts with the effort of each individual person. And everybody in this room with the same commitment towards change and community, I've had the experience and I know that it happens. I realize that in communities where there's a tremendous amount of hopelessness and people believe that there are no possibilities, to have a jewel come up out of the basement of a house that has been abandoned for 12 years that people really felt had no more life. That one opportunity opened up doors that are now uh, really providing an opportunity for other people to really see what they can do to contribute to transforming the community. So I am very, very proud to be here with you today and share my story with a little, about Little Black Pearl, but I also look forward to having the opportunity to answer questions because, again, this is about sharing what we've done, but it's also about hearing uh, your thoughts about what you need and what you think is possible in this community.
I know for a fact that all things are possible. And uh, every day, when I say I have a quote that I share when I'm speaking that I want to share with you, that I think is really one that speaks to the work of artists. And it says that when you walk to the edge of all the light that you know, and you take that step into the darkness of the unknown, there will always be something solid for you to stand on. Or you will learn to fly. Thank you. <laughs>